to a franchise that arrived in town five years ago. That, I mean, this is this is bad, man. That's James Dolan, though. Okay, okay. So every a, time he says something, you don't really listen to it anyway. Is that fair? James Dolan? When James Dolan, when, when he talks, when he says stuff, do you really listen to it? No. Let's be real. Okay. No. So he set expectations high. Where'd he get that from? That's who he is. Where'd he get that from? I don't That's know. who he is. He get this. I, he just got I don't that from know. He just got the man that all he cares about is playing his guitar with his joke of a band. This dude go go on Michael K's show on 98.7 FM in New York City and talk about, you know what? I think we're gonna have a great, great summer. He just decided to do that out of out of thin air. Really? Is that what you're saying? All I'm saying is that there are repeated habits that are not conducive to winning a championship. And that's all I've seen from Jim Dolan. Now, Scott Perry and Steve Mills, different story. Different story. I actually think, and I heard you today on multiple shows, talking about that's an indictment on the franchise. But I, I will say this, and we talked about this. There aren't a lot of franchises out there that have three African-American guys who are trying to tap into the new free agency market. I give them credit for that. I give them credit. I give them credit for that. Well, well, excuse me. Somebody's cutting those checks for them, and that would be James Dolan. And so, so we got to, and just like okay. I said, you think I'm not happy to see three brothers in that position? Of I'm course I am. But did they get an interview? No, they did not. Thank you. Is that not bad? That is bad. All right, that's where I'm coming from, Jamie, because you real. Now, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Listen, I'm your man. I might not be coming to your franchise, but if Jay Williams is running a franchise and he wants me as a marquee free agent, how much you want? You, you, you know the answer to this question. Am I going to give you a visit before I make my decision? 1,000%. Thank you very much. So what am I supposed to think when we don't even get a visit? I mean, are we going to say this? Because there's only one direction that's going. Are we going to clean the house? It wouldn't surprise me. That's the only it direction surprise it can go. Me. It wouldn't surprise me. But let me tell you something. You're going to clean house. Dolan got to go, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, but that's... If you're going to clean house, Dolan got to go. That, that that's, the, that's the house I'm talking about cleaning. That's the house I'm talking about cleaning. I'm not talking about cleaning the house below that house, which is where Steve Mills and Scott Perry are. I'm talking about cleaning the house above that one. I got to go. See, it just gets me emotional. I feel you. I just came in and said hello. You notice. And give you support. I know today has been a very, very emotional day for you. I know you love me. But on this particular subject, no, no, no. You, none hey, of y'all are here for me. None of y'all are here for me. All of you is turned your back on me. Right next to me next year and the year after that and the year after that, right across the East River. We're here for you. I, I might have to leave town, man. I might have to leave town. I might have to leave town. I, don't, I just don't know how much more of this I can take, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in a bad mood, but Jay Williams just made it worse. Jay Williams just made it worse because he knows what's going on here. He knows what's going on here better than most. An absolute travesty. Now, let me break this down right now. And let me make sure that everybody understands exactly what I am trying to say about the New York Knicks and how disgraceful, how pathetic, how moribund things are. I am not saying that Julius Randle is a bad signing. I am not saying that Bobby Portis is a bad signing. I'm not saying that the New York Knicks are wrong for engaging in prudency and what have you. That is not what I'm saying. Nor am I even saying that they're a worse team today than they were yesterday because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is the same franchise that hasn't had a championship since 1973. The same franchise that hasn't been that hasn't been to a conference finals since 1999. The same the same franchise that's won just one playoff series in 20 years. The same franchise that has been in the headlines for all the wrong reasons was still the New York Knicks in the heart of New York City, playing at Madison Square Garden. They're worth about $5 billion. They lost marquee superstars to a team in Brooklyn, New York, that just got here about five, six years ago. That just got here in five or six years. In five or six years, the Brooklyn Nets pulled off what the Knicks haven't been able to pull off in the last 50 years. That's where I'm going with this. I mean, this is just horrible. What y'all want me to say? Over the last few months, 
we saw Charles Barkley, Charles Oakley, I'm sorry, physically removed from Madison Square Garden. We saw a video of James Dolan banning a fan from the garden because the fan asked him to sell the team. We've seen the NBA find the Knicks $50,000 for exiling a reporter for the New York Daily News from a press conference, only for the New York Knicks to follow up and still ban the newspaper again. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing pettiness. We're seeing petulance. We're seeing a media policy that everybody continuously acts and just dismisses like it's no factor. If you're a marquee name, why be a part of this? And now we've got the Barclay Center looking like it's Madison Square Garden. Lonzo Trier can play. Dennis Smith Jr. can play a little bit. Kevin Knox has potential. R.J. Barrett has potential. Mitchell Robinson has potential. But on a day that you lose out to KD and Kyrie, nobody wants to hear a damn word about Julius Randle. It couldn't wait 24 hours. You couldn't reach a deal then. Nobody wants to hear about Bobby Portis on the day that you lost out on KD and Kyrie. You don't know that? Nobody wants to see reports that the New York Knicks weren't going to sign KD to the max because they were worried about his medical situation. You don't want to hear that on the day that KD and Kyrie signed with Brooklyn. Do you have any idea how that made the New York Knicks look? Now, in fairness to them, the report wasn't accurate. When Ramona Shelburne, in concert with Woj, reported the Knicks and owner James Dolan were not prepared to offer Kevin Durant a full max contract due to concerns over his recovery from the Achilles injury league sources tell her and Woj, Adrian woj Narowski. This is something I went on the air and reported over a week ago. New York Knicks wanted to see that medical report. They were a bit apprehensive. My point is, on the day that KD says no to you, doesn't even grant you a face-to-face -face interview, and on the day that Kyrie Irving essentially does the same, that's not something you want to see. It reeks of pettiness and bitterness. And whether it's true that the New York Knicks did that or not, because they categorically deny that that's what they said to anybody, the fact of the matter is, a report coming like that at that particular moment in time makes you look petty. Makes you look bad. It just does. You got to avoid these kind of headlines. And as Jay Williams stated, somebody has to go there, so I'm going to. The league is 80% African American. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you something right now. Steve Mills is an incredibly intelligent man. Without question. Scott Perry can't say enough about him and the reputation that he has throughout NBA circus. Highly respected. We all saw David Fisdale coach this team, the Memphis Grizzlies rather, to the postseason a couple of years ago in Memphis before losing out to San Antonio. You got three African-Americans in these positions. And before these brothers make a decision, they don't even grant you an interview. It looks bad. It just looks bad. Now, is that because of them? Is it because of Dolan? Is it because of the mess that the New York Knicks have been for decades and the residue of it all was just too much for those three brothers to overcome? Maybe. But if you're David Fisdale, and I hope you're somewhere listening to this, this is why I was talking about Mark Jackson as a coach. I don't know if Mark Jackson is better than David Fisdale. Now, David Fisdale is a damn good coach. David Fisdale has a great reputation. 
I respect the hell out of that man and I genuinely like him. And he was my second choice to be the coach of the New York Knicks and would have been my first choice almost anywhere else. But because of the residue of Madison Square Garden and Penn Station, where rats look like look at human beings like, what the hell are you doing up in here? You literally need it. Somebody like Amar Jackson for one or two reasons. Number one, to be that face of a franchise, to be the voice for New Yorkers on behalf of New Yorkers, to help sell New York, or to be the calming influence in the eye of a storm when things go awry as they seem to always do. And to calm New Yorkers down so everybody would be okay. And we'd be reminded that tomorrow would be a better day. We don't have that right now. And you can point the finger in a multitude of directions and who's the hell to say you'd be right or wrong? We don't know. All we know is that our misery seems to be perpetual. It seems to be never ending. And it seems to be proliferating in such a cruel fashion that we, don't, we shouldn't know what to do with ourselves. You are the New York Knicks. You lose out on KD and Kyrie to Golden State, the LA Lakers, the LA Clippers, whatever. Nobody's sweating that. All right, that's unfortunate. New York Knicks got to get better. That's not what this is, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about the New York Knicks not getting the stars. It's about the stars choosing New York, but not the Knicks. You lost out to Brooklyn. Brett Yormack, Nets. Michael Yormack, Live Nation, Rock Nation. Jay-Z, Juan Perez, Sean Marks, Kenny Atkinson. They built something over there in Brooklyn. They have a level of credibility the New York Knicks have been starving for for decades. I'll never abandon New York. I'll always love New York. It doesn't matter whether I'm living here or in L.A. I love the Knicks no matter what. No matter how many games the, New York, the Brooklyn Nets entice me to attend. But talk about exercising in cruelty. How is Spike Lee feeling right now? How has Ben Stiller feeling right now? I mean, it's gotten to a point where, my God, what are you going to do to us next? Just stab us in our chest? Don't even try to hide it no more? I mean, this is so epically bad. And if you're going to sign Julius Randle, did it have to be for $21 million? I thought you weren't doing any one but one or two year deals. You signed him a three year deal. Third year is a team option. So I guess that's a great thing. But I'm just saying. Did you have to announce it that day? John, look at me. Did it have to be announced yesterday? You couldn't wait till the day. How is it that minutes after losing out on KD and Kyrie, y'all think it's okay to reach an agreement with Julius Randle? It couldn't wait 12 hours? Bobby Portis? It couldn't wait 12 hours? You couldn't wait? This is worse than the New York Knicks going after LeBron James and acquiring an injury and injured Amari Stoudemire. I think the only thing worse than the reality of what has transpired is what may have contributed to it. I'll explain exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. 888 say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News, Straight Talk, Wireless, everything for less, only at Walmart. By the way, 
Everyone loves summer, except for sleeping in swampy, heat-trapping sheets with no way to get cool, stay dry, and obviously no rest. That's why you need Sheiks. Sheiks patented sleep tech, tech fabrics breathe 10 times better than traditional cotton sheets to keep you cool. They wick away moisture three times more than traditional cotton sheets to keep you dry, ensuring a more comfortable night's sleep. Visit trysheeks.com slash Stephen A and use code Stephen A to get 25% off your purchase plus free shipping, a bonus pair of pillowcases and a 30 night risk free guarantee. That's trysheeks, S-H-E-E-X.com slash Stephen A, code Stephen A. That's with a P-H, not a V. Is thinking about joining LeBron James and Anthony Davis in LA with the Lakers. I don't know about y'all, but I don't even know how fair it would be. I mean, you could perceive it as a weak move, no doubt about that, because talk about jumping on the bandwagon. You could do that as my man Jay Williams came on first taking and and acknowledged. Because when you're that great and you're joining that level of greatness, who the hell can beat you? I mean, my God, who the hell's going to beat the Lakers if Kawhi, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James are on the same damn team? Who the hell's going to beat the Lakers? How does anybody have a chance? By the way, can I raise my hand? I'm 51. I only play basketball about once every two years now with my busy schedule. I mean, damn. I think I could suit up for the Lakers if my three teammates are those dudes. Hell, I got a chance. All I got to do is stand around and shoot. And chances are I'll never shot like I did that day I was in front of James Harden who would have let me warm up before I was launching my threes. Ain't that hard. I mean, with these guys, I mean, damn. Kawhi, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James on the same team. It, 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 it wouldn't be fair. But I'm hearing it's entirely possible that that's going to happen. Kawhi Leonard's team reached out to Magic Johnson, requested Magic Johnson and Jeannie Buss in that room. If I'm the Los Angeles Lakers, I'm keeping that dude out of that meeting. Magic Johnson's never been shy about wanting the spotlight on himself. He's going to make it all about him. He wants to feel the love and stay important. If Kawhi says, look, I am not going to entertain the idea of playing with the Los Angeles Lakers unless I sit down with Magic, you have to allow him to do that. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. You never know what goes out of style. Surprising a friend or loved one with a dazzling bouquet or arrangements from 1-800-Flowers.com starting at just $29.99. To order today, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show right here over the National Airways of ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Before I get back to the calls, as I promised, um, you have to take into account and take stock of everything that's transpired. Uh, with the New York Knicks. Obviously, that's not the only team that made deals. Um, Kyrie left Boston. He's going to Brooklyn. Kemba Walker left Charlotte. He's going to Boston. Um, he wanted $190 million or more from Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan wasn't willing to trigger the luxury tax uh, for a miniature player that could, is very, very talented, a guy that he loved, clearly, uh, the most talented player on their squad, but obviously somebody that wasn't going to be able to get you to the postseason because that's not what Kemba Walker can do. Uh, and so because of that, Michael Jordan offered $20 million more than Boston could offer. That wasn't enough for Kemba. Felt insulted. He decided to go to Boston, even though I think that's kind of bogus because he was always trying to leave anyway. You don't need an excuse to want to leave Charlotte. You want to leave a small market team like that if they had signed him. I understand that Michael Jordan doesn't have the greatest reputation. I understand that it doesn't look like he's done the greatest job. Nobody can refute that. We all understand that. But the flip side to it that's very, very important to point out is that had he signed Kemba Walker to those dollars, then Kemba Walker, he would not have been able to acquire any other players. 
wouldn't have been able to do anything with the roster. Plus, you would have been missing the postseason anyway. So you just would have been paying Kemba to fill seats during the regular season before you went home in mid-April. So, you know, as bad as it seems, um, there's two sides to that. But Kemba Walker clearly is the quintessential appropriate replacement to Kyrie Irving in Boston. Uh, how far that gets them, we rem- it remains to be seen. We'll find out and we'll and we will definitely, definitely go from there. Um, Kawhi Leonard is still a decision that needs to be made. We'll find out what that is about and we will definitely go from there. All of that stuff is definitely something that, um, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, the Clippers are desperately waiting to see if they get Kawhi. They think that they've got a great, great shot at Kawhi. They think that Kawhi uh, would come to them before they go to the Lakers. The Lakers beg to differ. LeBron James has a relationship with him. Le- Magic Johnson has a relationship with those close to him, even though Magic is no longer the president of the basketball operations. Um Rob Palenka has a relationship with Kawhi's college coach because he was also Rob Palenka's college coach. So all of those things come into the equation. It comes into consideration. It is what it is. And there you go. Um, Back to the Knicks. Because this is unavoidable. When you think about what transpired yesterday and when you think about the fact that things are not the way or did not end up and pan out to be the way you thought they should be and you thought they were going to be. Here's the reality. You have to think about Chris Stapp's Porzingis now. Now, if you listen to the New York Knicks, Chris Stapp's Porzingis is not somebody that they wanted to trade. They were prepared to trade him. They took calls. They knew what other teams were offering. Uh, him coming off his ACL injury, still not ready to come back and play, not until next season, etc. They were aware of that. They were prepared to do whatever they needed to do. According to the New York Knicks, Porzingis comes into the office. He meets with their brass for four minutes, informs them he wants out. He wants to leave. He would appreciate them if they traded him. Matter of fact, Gave them four teams. One was San Antonio, one was Toronto. One was even Brooklyn. And I forgot the fourth one. Knicks obviously were looking. They wanted to oblige because they didn't need a guy there that didn't want to be there. That would be a walking billboard about not wanting to be there. For prospective free agents that may want to come to New York. So they rolled the dice and they unloaded him. If you listen to the Knicks, that's their explanation. Porzingis' side of things, the folks that he and his brother have spoken to, maybe his brother Yanis, what their interpretation was to folks in the NBA community, from my understanding, is that He didn't ask to be traded. He wasn't going to ask to be traded. All he wanted was a one-on-one with James Dolan. He wanted to see the direction of the franchise, what direction that they were going in, what they were going to do, et cetera, et cetera. And he wasn't going to speak too flatteringly about the organization. And the next thing you know, he was traded. I don't know what to believe. I'll give the Knicks the benefit of the doubt on that. Here's my issue. And it's one that's unavoidable. Do you know that Chris Tapp's Porzingis nickname, the unicorn, came from Kevin Durant? Did you know that Kevin Durant, that was the dude that he wanted to play with? Did you know that? And if that's the guy that he liked, then obviously you want to be careful. You want to be careful about moving him. You want to be careful about trading him. Here's the other side to all of this. Because this is the kind of scuttlebutt that's being put out there. And in fairness to the New York Knicks, haven't spoken to them about this, don't know their side of things on this matter. But I know when it comes to DeAndre Jordan, he and KD are pretty close. 
There's a reason why KD and Kyrie elected to take less than the max to ensure that this guy gets his $40 million over four years. And now he goes from New York City to Brooklyn. And why did that happen? Why did that become the case? From what I'm being told, he wasn't happy with the Knicks. Wasn't happy with how he was being utilized. Wasn't happy from being told that, you know what, we need to play some of the younger guys. I don't know how much truth there is to that. Here's what I do know. He just left the Knicks to go to Brooklyn. And if this dude was tight, if this dude was tight with KD, wouldn't you feel compelled to ingratiate yourself to the best of your ability with DeAndre Jordan so KD could be excited about potentially coming to New York? Isn't that possible? Was that too much to ask? I don't think so. But that's the situation. And as a result, the New York Knicks, if you listen up, folks speaking out against them, traded the player that KD may have wanted to play with most and alienated a person they had in house before he even got there. No matter what way you slice it, doesn't that sound like the New York Knicks? Right or wrong, true or false, perception-wise, does that not sound? Is that not consistent with what we've heard about the New York Knicks and the James Dolan era? And here's the thing. I'm not one of those people who excoriates James Dolan. Who's the person that's on the airwaves reminding you of the good that he's done, how philanthropic and charitable he is? Who's the person that tells you that players swear by him? Who's the person that tells you that people that play for him never speak ill of him? Ever. Ever. I'm the person that tells you that. His petulance, his pettiness that annoys me and rakes the nerves of New York Knicks fans everywhere. That's about the only thing we get to say about Dolan. I don't want to look at Steve Mills. I don't want to look at anybody else within Madison Square Garden. I'd like to, to aim my eye directly in the direction of a James Dolan. But when the man comes on a Michael K show... On 98.7 FM in New York City, and specifically tells you, I don't know anything about basketball. I don't make these basketball decisions. I leave that to the people that I hire. Y'all wanted me out of the way. I got out of the way. I haven't been involved since inter interfering in making sure that we honored our commitment to, to Carmelo Anthony. He didn't use those words, but that's basically what happened. Because they had promised Carmelo Anthony they were going to get him to New York a year earlier before he left Denver. See, these are inside tips y'all don't know about. The fact of the matter is, when he sits there and he says that he's left it to Steve Mills, when he says that he's left it to Phil Jackson, when he says that he left it to Isaiah Thomas, when he says that he's left it to all of these folks, aren't we missing a boat if we point the finger solely in his direction? Especially when what he's most known for is playing his guitar with his band. And ladies and gentlemen, by the way, they don't get paid. They pay people to let them perform. That's how bad it is. I think in one story I read, the band was paid $200. Ladies and gentlemen, vagrants on the street collect more than $200. And the band of a billionaire, that's all they can muster. If that don't put stuff in perspective, I don't know what the hell would. 888-SAY-ESPN, it's 888-729-3776. Back to your calls or to your calls in a minute. You listen live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio. If you missed any of my opening segment, go check it out on demand in the Stephen A. Smith podcast. Brought to you by Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong with your credit card. Sends an alert to your phone and helps you fix them. Hey, what's in your wallet?
See CapitalOne.com for details. His brand is Slaying Dynasty. Who's worked out with Kobe. And if you know anything about Kobe, he ain't going to recruit or talk or do all of this other stuff, but he's a Laker for life. He loves himself some Lakers now. And even though Kobe once upon a time feigned interest in the Clippers, when in fact he was really going to go to the Chicago Bulls, the reality is nobody associated with the Lakers would ever suggest choosing the Clippers over the Lakers. And Kawhi woke up, grew up a Lakers fan. So all of these things come into consideration when you look at the Lakers and why suddenly they're in the mix. And then I also have to bring this up. Kawhi is no longer with Brand Jordan, who is paying and willing to pay him a boatload of money. He's with New Balance. And New Balance would prefer him to be in L.A. than Toronto. They don't give a damn that he has a country at his disposal. That's hockey country. They give a damn about the United States. They give a damn about the second largest market in the United States. And they believe that the the L.A. Lakers brand transcends just the sport of basketball, and transcends just Los Angeles. The brand is global. People from all over the world love the Lakers. People from all over the world fantasize about the Lakers. And they believe that that brand would travel significantly and would embolden new balance in ways that can't Canada and Toronto fueling the American spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, a little announcement to make as of today. ESPN 630, the sports capital in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., is now carrying the Stephen A. Smith radio show. Welcome to the family. Appreciate y'all. Wish y'all good luck. Can you do me a favor, by the way? I'm sorry to just start off on a bad note. Damn it, could you hire a, a president of basketball operations? Could you do that? Tommy Shepard is good. He's there. He's qualified. How about Troy Weaver, assistant general manager under Sam Presti in Oklahoma City, Maryland native. He loved that job. How about that? Couldn't get him aside. Jerry, could you do something, Ted Leontis? Could you do something? Just anything. I'm down with it. I'm good. Could you do something, please? By the way, they got to make a decision. Since uh, John Wall is slipping in his home. Injuring himself. After signing for $170 million. I mean... Now you got a situation where your loan commodity is Bradley Beal. Got to figure out what you want to do with that. Getting back to the New York Knicks real quick. Listen, I don't want it to be misinterpreted. I'm not trying to imply that Kevin Durant wanted to play with the unicorn. Chris Stapps was Zingas. His brother can be a headache from what I'm told. What I'm saying that's important to recognize is that his brother and them have a different interpretation than the New York Knicks have of what exactly transpired. And because that... Here we are! Midtown Manhattan! Bright light, big city, Broadway, in eyesight! And instead, Madison Square Garden is now the Barclays Center. Good Lord have mercy. Our number two.
jumping at you as I love to do every weekday. Number to call up as always is 888-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by Penn Source Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. So make the switch to Penn Source Synthetics today. Plus, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, making it easy to bundle your home and your car insurance. I'm not going to go as far as I thought I was going to go. I ain't going to lie to y'all, ladies and gentlemen. I was tempted to call for James Dolan to surrender ownership of the Knicks franchise. I was tempted to talk about cleaning house. I'm so damn disgusted it's hard to put into words how I feel. But I will say this. The New York Knicks are not worse today than they were yesterday. It's just that the Brooklyn Nets are significantly better. And when I sit up there and I tell you that the Brooklyn Nets have stolen basketball from the New York Knicks in this city in terms of the brand and everything that comes with it. Because ladies and gentlemen, similar to LA, when you are the one who attracts stars, you matter. My man, Brian Wintos, who's done a fabulous job covering the NBA for us all season long, said something very profound this morning on my show, First Take. Airs every weekday morning from 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Standard Time with Max Kellerman and Molly Karam as well. Brian Wintour said the New York Knicks are exercising prudency. You have Julius Randle. You have Bobby Portis. They added Wayne Ellington on a two-year deal and stuff like that. These are prudent moves, prudent decisions. Nobody's got more than a two-year deal. They got to play a team option on a third year for Julius Randle. All of those things are true. But what I'm saying is the stars... The mega box office stars who are champions have a championship resume. They chose Brooklyn over New York City. They chose Brooklyn over Broadway. In five years, the Brooklyn Nets have accomplished what we've been waiting decades for the Knicks to do for us. That is the sadness. Melo don't count because you knew he wasn't going to be better than LeBron. Patrick Ewan was drafted. When you went to the finals in 99, that was a lockout shortened season with Marcus Camby and those boys. Larry Johnson and them. Latrell Sprewell. You wasn't going to beat Tim Duncan, David Robinson and those boys. Chris Porzingis' brother doesn't have the greatest reputations. Considered a real pain by some people. I don't know the man, but I know what he's saying about the Knicks. I know the Knicks refute it, but I know that no matter how much truth there is in the Knicks' words, the bottom line is the Brooklyn Nets have stolen New York City from the Knicks. I mean, with, with Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett on the same team, is anybody going right? I mean, we got the, I mean, why don't we just call them progressives? I know I just did a, a promo, you know, promote progressive show, supporting the show and everything. Why don't we just call them progressive? They ain't going nowhere but left. They ain't going right. There's nothing about them that's going right. You're talking about left-handed bandits all day long. R.J. Barrett. Julius Randle. We fantasized about Zion Williamson. We got Julius Randle. We talked about the need for dudes to be ambidextrous. We got two dudes that's going left all day. I got faith in R.J. Barrett, though. But it remains to be seen what's going to happen. But right now, we got to call them the progressive Knicks. Ain't nobody going right. Ain't nobody going right. I can tell you that right now. Ain't nobody going right. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Some other things to get out of the way. We got to talk about the Clippers and the Lakers for one second. Ladies and gentlemen... Kawhi Leonard, I believe, ain't going back to Toronto. I don't know at all. I believe he ain't going back to Toronto. New Balance wants him in L.A. The Lakers want him. The Clippers want him. The richest owner in all the sports, Steve Ballmer, wants him badly. Jerry West believes in him, wants him badly. Doc Rivers wants him badly. The Lakers, he texts LeBron James. LeBron James is saying stuff like I might walk away from this game in another three years or so. That would leave him the Lakers franchise in the hands of him and AD by the time they're 30. Because AD is 26, Kawhi is 27. The Laker brand is what it is. He's worked out and knows Colt with and he knows Kobe. 
Magic is cool with his uncle. I don't know what the hell's going to go on, but I know this. I don't want Kawhi to go to the Lakers. If he went to the Lakers, there's no reason to discuss basketball next season, ladies and gentlemen. Who's going to beat Kawhi, AD, and LeBron? There's no reason to talk basketball next season. But if he went to the Clippers, you talk about the Lakers, the Clippers, and once again, let me bring up the Portland Trailblazers because Nurkic would be back healthy. I love the fact, I don't, I said, I take this back. I love it for Miami that they just traded Hassan Whiteside to Portland for Mo Harkless and Myers Leonard because I like both of those dudes in Miami with Jimmy Butler. That might change things a little bit in South Beach. I might have a reason to come down to South Beach again. And we all know I'm looking for an excuse to do that. So you got that going on, okay? Portland, let me tell you this real quick, what's resonating with me. I want to take a moment to shift and give um, tremendous, tremendous congratulations to Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard is not just one of my favorite players in the NBA. He's one of my favorite people. I know him a little bit. We speak often. I got a lot of love for this brother. He's as real as they come. He's a sniper. Just ask OKC about that. Damian Lillard is a special brother. He just signed a Supermax deal. Six years, $258 million. He is the first $50 million per year player in the history of team sports, North American team sports. That is Damian Lillard. And I've sat here and I've given props to the great Bill Duffy and the fabulous job he's done for so many clients as an agent. I've given props to Rich Paul, who deserves props because he has delivered for the Los Angeles Lakers. Jeannie Buss and those boys know him everything. Rich Paul has delivered. But we going to give any love to the Goodwin brothers? Aaron and Eric? I mean, they've been around for a long time. They've been representing everybody for years, like Gary Payton and others. These brothers are special now. And it ain't just black agents, it's white agents, the David Falks of the world, the Jeff Wexels of the world who just got dropped by Kyrie Irving for Rock Nation with my man Juan Perez and Jay-Z in the crew. But Jeff Swartz, Mark Bottlestein, David Falk, Jeff Wexler, these individuals know what they're doing. And I'm certainly not trying to discredit anybody from that. And I miss my man... Hank Thomas, Henry Thomas, who represented Bosch and D. Wade and those boys. God rest his wonderful soul, one of the best people I've ever met in my life. And as a personal aside, up front of all of this stuff, let me just say this. Yeah, I was busy and sick. And I didn't make it to that funeral for Hank Thomas, but one of the reasons that I didn't make it was for personal reasons. That personal reason is that after what I've gone through with my parents over the last two years, I just couldn't take another funeral. But I miss that man and I love that man. He was a great man and a great agent and we all miss him. But I got to tell you right now, as a black man, as an African-American that just pointed out to Steve Mills, Scott Perry, David Fisdale running the Knicks, but didn't get a brother, to, didn't get an interview from a brother like Kevin Durant. I want to also take time to point out how got a lot of brothers doing a lot of great things. We've raved about Rich Paul. We should rave more about Bill Duffy. The Goodwin brothers, this kind of deal they just pulled. Let me tell you something now. Damian Lillard earned it because he's old school. He ain't trying to team up with nobody. Yeah, I'm telling y'all right now, he'd be caught dead before he tagged teams with a couple of other dudes just to dominate the league playing with your friends. He wants to compete against cats, not join forces with them, which is why I got so much love for him. And a commitment that he's shown to Portland, because Portland ain't getting any free agents, y'all. They ain't getting no marquee free agents. They ain't coming to the Pacific Northwest. It ain't happening. Only people I know that don't mind 
going to the Pacific Northwest or a couple of gorgeous flight attendants that I know. That's about it. If it ain't Seattle, ain't nobody interested in being out in the Northwest. So the bottom line is, hey, you got to keep what you got. Portland did that in taking care of Damian Lillard, who was the face of that franchise. And C.J. McCollum is no joke either. And acquiring Hassan Whiteside, who quit on the Miami Heat a couple of years ago, as far as I'm concerned, after he got his money. He needs a new beginning away from South Beach. Too many damn distractions for him in South Beach. He needs to be in some place like Portland. But congratulations to the Goodwin brothers. Aaron and Eric. They deserve our props. They've been around for a long time. They know this business. Know what the hell they're doing. Know what the hell they're talking about. Damian Lillard didn't go to that negotiating table and negotiate this deal for himself. They got something to do with that. Major, major props to them. All the brothers in the business doing big things. All of you. I'm proud. 888, say ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You know if I wasn't, I wouldn't say so. Let's go to the phones. Ramon, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hello, Stephen A. Yes, you're on the line. Go ahead. How you doing, sir? I just how you think I'm doing? You question. know I'm not doing well. Don't ask me how I'm doing today, man. man. Go ahead. Is it, not, is it safe to say that, is it, 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 is it fair to say that the Knicks had more than enough time to get the act together? Is it fair to say that? Is it fair to say that they've had or they do have? They, they've had. More yes. than enough time. They've had to get more than enough together. time. Yes, that is true. Fair to say that. Yes, it is. So why are you acting as if Brooklyn isn't in New York, man? Be happy, man. We got something to look forward no, no, to. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I mean, for me, it's like, you know, you grow up a diehard Nick fan, man. It's the only franchise you've known really all your life in basketball. That's what I'm saying. It's just, I it's just, that, you know what? Let, game, let me say man. this to you. Let me say, couldn't you get something? Like, could, couldn't one of them come to New York and the other go to Brooklyn? I mean, Dan, you got to lose out across the board. Do you understand that on literally minutes after it was announced, Kyrie and KD are going to Brooklyn, the New York Knicks signed Julius Randle? You couldn't wait 24 hours to announce that? Stephen A., but what I'm saying is that building that you guys have been big up for years is no. just a building, man. It's not even that. It's not even that anymore. Man, they can renovate. They can renovate. As far as I'm concerned, they can blow up. They can implode Madison Square Garden right now. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and play at uh, some small gym like St. Raymond's High School or something. I don't give a damn. You're That's how Queens. I feel right now. You from Queens, correct? Queens, yes, I am. Born in the Bronx, raised in Hollis, Queens. Okay, the Knicks is just a. The, the, it's just a building. In Manhattan, man. We yeah. got to build it in Brooklyn, man. Just yeah. come over, man. You know, I'm coming Just over. Come over man. I ain't got no choice. I want to watch come basketball, over. don't I? I ain't got no choice. They ain't leave me one. I got I no just, choice but to come to the park. They said it now. That whole Mecca thing that they've been hiding behind, man, it's not going to work no more, man. No. It's not gonna work. Listen, man, I'm coming to Brooklyn. I got I got mad respect for Brooklyn. And it's not like I'm rooting against them. I didn't want them to flop or fail. I just wanted the Knicks to succeed too. I didn't want them to succeed at the expense of the Knicks. But it's hope. It's hope. You said when you talk about, I'm not talking about who's going to have a better record, better team, whatever, whatever. Even though I think it's going to be Brooklyn, I think Kyrie going to put on a show before KD arrives. My point is, is that the marquee has decided to go to Brooklyn. That's what I'm trying to say. The marquee has decided to go to Brooklyn instead of Broadway. That's just, oh, who would have thought that would ever happen? I mean, traffic on Atlantic City, on Atlantic Avenue was enough to dissuade you from feeling that way. It's all over. It's all over. The marquee has shown up. What's next? You know what's going to be next, man? You know what's going to be next, Ramon? The boxing matches, more. Deontay Wilder was just there the other day. There's going to be more boxing matches. You ain't going to see people coming to the garden like that, man. They'll be like, why don't we go to the Barclays? Watch. There's going to be more events there. There's going to be more entertainment in Brooklyn. You watch. You watch. People might come to Manhattan for Broadway. They ain't going to come for the Garden. Sammy, talk to me. What's up? What's up, Stephen? Um, first of all, can 1-800-Flowers get you like 10 boutique of flowers for free today? They need to send you all of them to, uh, to lighten up your day, you know? <laughs> it, my, day, my day cannot be lightened. 
My day cannot be long. And I am loved. I don't know if I've ever said this enough, but do you have any idea how loved I am? People actually adore me. Did you know that? People actually adore me. They adore the ground that I walk on. And still, it's nothing they could do to make me feel better right now. There's nothing anybody can do to make me feel better. I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt. I'm just a man. You know, it's like that Tom Hanks, there ain't no crying in baseball to show the, the movie Major Leagues. And I said there's no crying in basketball. Bob Myers, the general manager for the Golden State Warriors after he was crying when KD went down. I can't then turn around and cry in front of y'all over the national airways. But I want to. I really, really want to. I'm depressed and sick to my stomach over what the hell has transpired. I really am. Go ahead, Sammy. I'm from uh, Miami, so if you want to go to retirement early and just get on the heat bandwagon, uh, you're welcome there. Everyone will welcome you in. Um, but Jimmy, I like Jimmy Butler, how we got him. I like Hassan going to Portland. I, I, I'm very glad that we got rid of him. Myers Leonard hit 35 versus the Warriors, I think, in the playoffs, so that, that would be good for the Heat. What do you think about them getting Bradley Beal? Like, what are the chances on that, and how could they get him and add a couple more people? I don't, think, I don't think you have the assets to get Bradley Beal. I think you just gave up some assets to acquire Jimmy Butler. And because you have Jimmy Butler, you don't need Bradley Beal. So that's making me question your basketball acumen because Bradley Beal is not a point guard. He is an off guard. And that's what Jimmy Butler plays. But I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. Let's go to Marty. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Marty. Hey, what's going on, Frat? What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Not too much, Omega, no. man. Just, I'm, yes, I just feel a little bad for you because of New York. Knicks going yes. against uh, New Jersey. Yep. Next. I was hoping that you get one of your boys over there too, especially Durant. But you know the market. I guess everybody really went for the money this season. Eh? Well, listen, they didn't go for the money. First of all, the Knicks, the Nets couldn't pay them any more than the Knicks could pay them. A. B. They didn't take max dollars. They actually took less to facilitate DeAndre Jordan getting his four years and forty million dollars. So it wasn't about money. And you got to remember that that especially in the case of KD, he was offered the Supermax $221 million deal over the next five years by the Golden State Warriors. So clearly money was not the issue. Yeah, I understand. I was just hoping that one of the boys go to my team, Philly. Let me tell but, you something right now. I don't think you need it. I think Philadelphia right now is legitimately the favorite to come out of the Eastern Conference. I think picking up Al Horford is huge. Uh, re-signing Tobias Harris. I do not like the fact that you lost J.J. Reddick because I still think you need a sniper, and that hurts you. It would have been nice if they got somebody like a Seth Curry, for example, who just signed for four years and $32 million with the Dallas Mavericks. I personally believe that you need to find a way to replace J.J. Reddick because you can't lose a long-range sniper like that. Uh, but... Ben Simmons, you're going to take care of him with max dollars. You're going to, you already signed uh, Joel Embiid. You got Tobias Harris re-upped for a five-year, $180 million deal. You acquired uh, Al Horford for 100, uh, I'm sorry, for $97 million with incentives that can pump it to $109 million. You've got a security blanket in the event that Joel Embiid has to miss games or he goes out for an indefinite period of time. So you got size and defense, plus a guy that can step away from the basket and hit perimeter shots for you from the big man position. So you've insulated yourself in that regard. The only thing the Sixers are missing is a replacement for J.J. Redick. If they still had J.J. Redick, not only would I guarantee you the Sixers will be coming out of the East in the NBA Finals, I tell you they'd have a good shot to win the championship. Yeah, I would have loved for Curry or uh, even Eagle Dollar to go back and retire. Eagle Dollar, from what I'm being told, uh, you know they're working out a deal uh, where he would get traded to Memphis to make room for D'Angelo Russell coming to the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors of the mindset, we're going to lose KD, we can't go over the luxury, we can't go over the cap to bring on a new player. We're only allowed to do that to retain our own player. So the only way to ensure that we were going to get compensation is to work out a trade. You get D'Angelo Russell, who's only 23 years of age, who can handle the ball, plus shoot, plus spell for both Clay and Steph. They like their eye. They like they know they they probably know they're not going to win a championship, but they're definitely going to compete for one. So they like that and they're pleased with the move that they made. But in order to make that move, they have to let go of Andre Iguodala, who's scheduled to make 18 million next year. You're going to move him to Memphis. He has basically, according to sources, informed everybody what he is going to do is he's going to work out a buyout and then go to the Lakers. Okay. 
So okay. Andre Iguodala is planning on joining the Lakers from what we're being told. I don't know how true that is, whether or not it's going to definitively happen, but that is the plan at this particular moment in time. Hey, I was just going to let you know I was so fat that you're number one in my show. And you top, you. you top dog. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you, bro. You're doing your show, dog. Thank you, man. Good dog, no doubt. Let's go to Prin Prine. Prine, you're live with Stephen A. How are you? How's it going, Stephen A? All right, uh, what's going just on? Just want to offer my deepest condolences to you and Knicks fans everywhere, first of all. Yeah, well, um, why you got to say that with laughter? Why you got to say that? Am, I, I, wanna, to, am I supposed to no, be? I, am I supposed to believe I, that I, you're sincere? It was a sneeze right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, better, better, better be. Go ahead. Um, I want to take your mind off for a minute. I'm just, you mentioned D'Angelo Russell. How do you think he'll fit in with the Warriors, especially with Clay out? I'm sorry. What did you ask me? I said you. You just mentioned. Uh, excuse me. You just mentioned D'Angelo Russell. Yes. How do you think he's going to fit in with the Warriors next season? Oh, who cares? Who now? cares? The fact of the matter is, are they going to win a championship? No. And I told the Warriors that this morning. They ain't won no damn championship. I like D'Angelo Russell. He can play. There is an upside. Do I think he's a little bit overpaid at 117 million? Yeah. But their mentality is Andre Iguodala is 35 years of age. He was going to miss a chunk of regular season games anyway. Here we got a young brother with fresh legs who we can insert, play over 30 minutes a game. That's going to be on the floor for us. Plus, he can shoot. Plus, he knows how to run a basketball team because he's a starting point guard and an all-star. And if we put him on the court with Clay, Steph, and Draymond, you got four all-stars on the court at the same time. We like our chances. That's their mentality. They're not downgrading in any way in their estimation. Only from KD to D'Angelo. KD compromises their championship aspirations. But they still believe they'll be a playoff team and they'll be formidable. And I can't disagree with them on that front. So he'll fit in, but they ain't going to win a championship. And at this particular juncture, that's all that matters since you've been to five straight finals. I definitely agree with that. Uh, one more thing. Hurry up. I don't, think, I don't think all hope is lost with the Knicks because I think you're forgetting that Carmelo Anthony... Not signed with the team right now. So, you know, if they, oh, go, if to they hell. Step, go to hell. Bye. 888 say ESPN. It's 888 729 3776. Ladies and gentlemen, I was rude to him on purpose. He was sitting there talking about all, all hope is not lost because Carmelo Anthony still hasn't signed with a team, implying that the New York Knicks could always bring him back. Please stop it. Don't play with me today. I'm in no mood. You know, he's lucky I didn't cuss him out. But I mean, that's only because we on FCC Airways, we're an AM, FM dial. If we were just on Sirius XM, you might have heard a couple of choice words for that caller. I'm telling you that right now. I'm in no mood to play. I'm in no mood to play. 888-SAY-ESPN. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, everybody loves summer, except for sleeping in swampy, heat-trapping sheets with no way to get cool, stay dry, and obviously no rest. That's why you need Sheik's. Sheik's patented sleep tech fabrics breathe 10 times better than traditional cotton sheets to keep you cool. They wick away moisture three times more than traditional cotton sheets to keep you dry, ensuring a more comfortable night's sleep. Visit trysheiks.com slash Stephen A and use code Stephen A to get 25% off your purchase, plus free shipping, a bonus pair of pillowcases, and a 30-night risk-free guarantee. That's trysheiks, S-H-E-E-X dot com slash Stephen A. Code Stephen A. It's with a P-H. Out of V. Is that KD? He changes his mind. He makes his decision. He might change his mind. You gotta be sure. Nobody knows what the hell KD is gonna do. Okay, but he will get the offer. Here's where it gets tricky. Last night and this morning. I personally have received word from very reliable sources that Kawhi Leonard is strongly considering going to the Los Angeles Lakers. We've been talking to the Toronto Raptors. We've been talking about the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm hearing the Lakers. Kawhi Leonard is thinking about joining LeBron James and Anthony Davis in L.A. With the Lakers. I don't know about y'all. But I don't even know how fair it would be. I mean. You could perceive it as a weak move. No doubt about that. Because talk about jumping on the bandwagon. You could do that as my man Jay Williams came on first taking and, and acknowledged. 
Because when you're that great and you're joining that level of greatness, who the hell can beat you? I mean, my God, who the hell's going to beat the Lakers if Kawhi, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James are on the same damn team? Who the hell's going to beat the Lakers? How does anybody have a chance? But by the way, can I raise my hand? I'm 51. I only play basketball about once every two years now with my busy schedule. I mean, damn, I think I could suit up for the Lakers if my three teammates are those dudes. Hell, I got a chance. All I got to do is stand around and shoot. And chances are I'll never shot like I did that day I was in front of James Harden who would have let me warm up before I was launching my threes. Ain't that hard. I mean, with these guys, I mean, damn. Kawhi, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James on the same team, it, 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 it would be fair. But I'm hearing... It's entirely possible that that's going to happen. We did it. We drafted R.J. Barrett. The New York Knicks, they got their man, all right? R.J. Barrett has pressure because there are wild expectations surrounding the New York Knicks. Do you have big enough shoulders to carry this franchise? You know, I haven't even played a game yet, so are you going to ask me a question like that? <laughs> Easily, he's good enough to be the face of this franchise. He's not scared of the big stage. In this case, that will be Madison Square Garden. This is the place I want to be, so for everything to work out the way it did, I couldn't be happier. on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. Presented by Progressive Insurance, protecting commercial vehicles and offering specialized coverages designed to protect your business. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. An appropriate promo considering the fact that the New York Knicks could easily be called the New York Progressives since they got nobody going right. Everybody's going left. Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett. Um, it is what it is. Um, breaking news. New York Knicks... Um, after signing Julius Randle, after signing Bobby Portis, after signing Wayne Ellington this morning, have now added Alfred Payton, the former 10th overall pick in the 2014 NBA draft. Playing the last several years in Orlando, and last year he was with the New Orleans Pelicans, averaged 10.7 rebounds a game. Uh, that Alfred Payton, uh, the New York Knicks just signed him to a two-year deal. Brooklyn Nets get Kyrie and KD. The New York Knicks get Wayne Ellington and Alfred Payton. I, I think they're doing this to me on purpose, John. I, I really do. I mean, they, 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 they don't have to do this. I mean, does anybody have any idea how cool this is? <sighs> You can't even wait. You can't wait to win. You can't sign them to like a deal tomorrow, like a Tuesday. You got to do it now. <sighs> Armando, you're live with Stephen A. Stephen A, how you doing, brother? Yeah. Um, I'm a lifelong Knicks fan, man, you know, and uh, I got to say, this is probably the worst I've ever seen this organization. Um, and I think that we need to hold Dolan responsible for his actions. And I understand he's not involved in basketball operations or so, he says, but he is directly responsible for creating the culture and the reputation around the Knicks. And we need to hold him responsible for that, man. And nothing's going to change if he's the owner. And Stephen A., as a Knicks fan, you need to use this platform for Knicks fans everywhere and publicly call for this man to sell the team. And if you're scared to do it, man, then give me the platform, and I'll do it for you. I'll do first thing. I'll do get up. I'll do your two-hour radio show. And I'll call for this garbage donor to sell the damn franchise and be held accountable for his acts. There's nothing going to change. Nothing's going to change, even, and I'm tired of this. Let me say this to you. Here's why I'm having a difficult time doing that to James Dolan. He cuts the check. He spares no expense. And when he publicly acknowledges that he doesn't know basketball and he hands over the franchise to others, 
when we talk about him, but we don't talk about the people he has running the franchise. When do we do that? I don't think it's the guys who are responsible. Let, 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 let me let me let me phrase the question a better way. Weren't we all happy when James Dolan brought Phil Jackson on board and gave Phil Jackson this five-year, $60 million deal and named him president of basketball operations for the franchise? Do you remember that? I remember. Yeah, sure. Didn't James Dolan say Phil Jackson would be making the basketball decisions and I'm not getting involved? Didn't that happen? Yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say to you is, when do we sit up there? And I'm not trying to let James Dolan off the hook because I think that his reputation precedes him. I think that he is widely not respected and that has a lot to do with how this organization is viewed. But in all fairness, if Phil Jackson and Steve Mills, Princeton educated, former president of MSG, presently running basketball operations for the New York Knicks. If Dolan, I could see if it was something private, Armando. James Dolan came on a Michael K show and publicly stated, I don't make basketball decisions. Y'all all wanted me to stay out of the way. It's on them. I do what they tell me they need me to do. And other than that, I stay out of it. And every bit of evidence points to him playing his guitar with his band, traveling across the globe to do so. What I'm saying is if that's the reality, what are we supposed to do? I don't think that's the reality, Stephen A. What do you think, think is the reality? I think that what, what's happening is that he has a more control over what he, um, than what he says he did. And his ego is gigantic. And that's why we know his actions are directly responsible for why we didn't get a meeting with Kevin Durant. It wasn't because we have this great front of office. You know, we have good guys running the franchise. You have good guys out there. But why Kevin Durant didn't can sit down for a meeting is because James Dolan. All right. And that's okay. why. And All right. Okay. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. Let's go to Jake. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Jake? Hey, Stephen A. How you doing? How the hell you think I'm doing? <laughs> I know how you feel, brother. We got all this talk about the Knicks and the Nets the last couple of days, but the team we need to be talking about right now is Los Angeles Lakers, my friend. What about? Got Kawhi Leonard, sir. Hold on, wait a minute. Possibly join. P possibly. Possibly. Hasn't happened yet. Hey, I think there's a good shot. We all think it's a good shot, but let me ask you this question. What if they don't get him? What if they don't get him? Then yeah. I still think they're going to be a top four team in the West. So do I. Anthony Davis. So do I. So do I. So why are you tripping? And here's my other point. I would rather have 80 to 81 great nights of basketball a year in L.A. with two teams going at it in pursuit of a championship rather than have one team so dominant that the balance of power is so drastically shifted. Kawhi, A.D., and LeBron is damn near unfair. That's my belief. What about you? I think that as a Lakers fan since 06, that the Lakers would be absolutely dominant, of course, as you mentioned. And for sure, Kawhi would add something that the Lakers don't really have right now as a shooter. I got you, but you still aren't really answering my question. In other words, you don't really want to compete. You want sheer dominance because the Lakers have been in that so long. You don't mind the balance of power being so drastically shifted. You don't. LeBron and AD ain't enough for you. You want even more. You're gluttonous. Goodbye. Ali, you're live with Stephen A. Hey, what's going on, Stephen A? Listen, uh, my question is, do you think Durant would have chosen Knicks had they given him the max, had they had that meeting, or was Brooklyn something that was a lock? I think that once upon a time earlier this season, he was obviously considering that because the very sources that told me so are people that are incredibly, incredibly close to him. And even down to the last few weeks, he was still considering the Knicks and refused to write them off. But in the end, Kyrie is his boy and he wanted to be with Kyrie and Kyrie's more strong willed than him. And Kyrie was not coming to the New York Knicks. He wanted to be near his family but he wanted to be in Brooklyn. That's why he didn't go into LA. It was going to be the Lakers or it was going to be the Nets. 
And Kyrie wanted to be with his family, near his family. He did not want to be out in L.A. I mean, we never really had a chance. Basically. You can say you never really had a chance. Folks are saying you did until he went down and got injured. And it was easier for him to follow because of his injury, as opposed to him signing with the New York Knicks, them being all he had, and then everybody clamoring for him to hurry the hell up and get back because they needed him on a basketball court. With Kyrie, it almost buys you more time to get healthy and to do your thing in Brooklyn. Plus, you're playing with one of your good, good friends. And that's the difference. Appreciate the call. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Back with your calls to close out the show in a minute. By the way, the Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by Hulu, which has live sports. Watch live games and all your favorite teams live on Hulu. No cable required. Live TV plan required. Restrictions apply. Plus, need seats to a game? Download the Vivid Seats app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Don't buy just any seat. Get a vivid seat. Magic Johnson's been t- talking. CLA. Magic Johnson's been talking to all of these people. Rob Palenka, credit to him. He played for Steve Fisher, Kawhi's college coach. The man knows Coach Fisher. He's communicated with Fisher throughout these months. Then there's Kawhi, who does not have a bad relationship with with LeBron James. As a matter of fact, the relationship is very good. They text one another all the time. They practiced with one another in the offseason in the past. And you've had Kawhi, who's worked out with Kobe. And if you know anything about Kobe, he ain't going to recruit or talk or do all of this other stuff, but he's a Laker for life. He loves himself some Lakers now. And even though Kobe once upon a time feigned interest in the Clippers, when in fact he was really going to go to the Chicago Bulls, the reality is nobody associated with the Lakers would ever suggest choosing the Clippers over the Lakers. And Kawhi woke up, grew up a Lakers fan. So all of these things come into consideration when you look at the Lakers and why suddenly they're in the mix. And then I also have to bring this up. Kawhi is no longer with Brand Jordan, who is paying and willing to pay him a boatload of money. He's with New Balance. And New Balance would prefer him to be in L.A. than Toronto. They don't give a damn that he has a country at his disposal. That's hockey country. They give a damn about the United States. They give a damn about the second largest market in the United States. And they believe that the the L.A. Lakers brand transcends just the sport of basketball and transcends just Los Angeles. The brand is global. People from all over the world love the Lakers. People from all over the world fantasize about the Lakers. And they believe that that brand would travel significantly and would embolden New Balance in ways that Canada and Toronto would not. It's show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. Stephen A. Smith podcast brought to you by Capital One Save a Card. Earn 4% cash back on dining and entertainment, 2% at grocery stores, and 1% on all other purchases. Hey, hey, what's in your wallet? Back to the phones we go. Reg, Reggie, you're live Stephen A. Real quick, go. Hey, how you doing, Stephen A.? Uh, one day I ran into the Kimbe Matumbo and I asked him, when are the Knicks ever going to be relevant again? And he said, as soon as the owners sell the team. So, Stephen A., man, we're begging you, please, you got the platform and the foundation. Call for his ownership. We're not going to go anywhere with James Dolan. I can't take it anymore. I don't believe that either. But I don't believe that either. But the fact of the matter is, is that if the man sits up there and says he has nothing to do with basketball operations and you have lieutenants like Steve Mills and others who have publicly stated, we run basketball operations for this franchise, okay? He doesn't have anything to do with it then it's hard to sit up there and just set up this. You got to go. 
Mickey Harrison leads basketball operations to Pat Riley. We don't talk about Mickey. So I'm just saying, it's just, it's just a hard pill to swallow. Yes, it is. This is a hard pill to swallow. Appreciate the call, man. Let's go to Michael. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Stephen A. I'm um, a big fan of yours. Um, I was talking about um, Kawhi Leonard's free agency. As a Laker fan, I definitely don't want him to be there. I want him to be there. But as far as a basketball fan, I don't want him to be there. It's competition. But do you think that the Lakers will be too top heavy if they add a Kawhi Leonard? Well, listen, I don't listen, you can say too top heavy all you want to. This is a sport of basketball. You got those three monsters on the same team. Ain't nobody beating the Lakers. If Kawhi A D and LeBron James are teamed together, this is Kevin Durant joining Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Period. Nobody's got a shot of winning the title next year if those three are playing together. That's why I would prefer that Kawhi goes to the Clippers, even though I think it's very possible he ends up with the Lakers, even though the Clippers swear up and down, they think they got a better shot than the Lakers at getting him. But I want him with the Clippers because instead of 40 nights a year or 41 nights a year at the Staples Center, we talking about 80, 81 nights a year where they're going at it against each other. That would be something special to watch. Appreciate the call. Ivan, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. How you doing? I'm all right. Go ahead. Big fan, big fan. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I hear you giving, you know, the Nick from Scrooge, giving the group, you're going in on them. Um, Now, I can relate with that because as a Laker fan, that was going on for a while. But, you know, I played this situation in my head. What if we were to, like, you know, put the Lakers in the Knicks' shoes and the Let's stop, let me stop you right there. I've given you a full minute to speak, and you haven't said a damn thing. When you call up in this show, you got to be ready with a point of view. Why did you call? What is your point? Okay, so what if what if the Lakers were the Knicks right now? Say they didn't get AD, a- a- would they get the same? They are the Knicks. Neal, they missed the, the playoffs the last six years just like the Knicks have. The Knicks have missed the last six years of the playoffs just like the Lakers have. Matter of fact, bad. they're worse than the Lakers because they've had no star to speak of. The Lakers had Kobe, and then last year they got LeBron. What do the Knicks have? Julius Randle, Wayne Ellington, Alfred Payton, Bobby Portis. Are you kidding me? Just when I thought somebody wasn't going to get on my damn nerves, you call. Talk to y'all in 22 hours. Goodbye. Hey, what's up? It's 